So the moment has come. You're deciding to try Windows on the Steam Deck. There are hundreds of guides, and this video aims to be the most comprehensive guide for the available options to choose for Windows on the Steam Deck. This video is going to cover the following methods. 1. The internal SSD or NVMe, which is the preferred method. 2. An external SSD or NVMe. 3. The not recommended method, the micro SD for Windows. Before you ask about booting a USB flash drive for Windows, you're lucky I'm even including the micro SD option in this video. If you try to use a flash drive for running Windows, I don't want to hear about it. We're going to go over the pros and cons for each method and then list the required items. Timestamps in this video should lay them all out individually, so if there is a method you're particularly interested in, feel free to skip to the corresponding timestamp. At the end, we'll go over the driver setup and other options. We will not be covering which version of Windows you should get. That ultimately is your choice. However, I will briefly say there are at least two games that do not work on Windows 11, and this is because of anti cheat needing the secure boot option enabled. Those two games are FIFA 23 and Valorant. There may be more as time goes on. There's a discussion on the Steam forums for Valve to provide the proper keys so that secure boot can be enabled, but so far we've received the typical Valve response. Windows 10 uses less system resources out of the box, while Windows 11 has better touch features and Microsoft will continue adding more gaming features to it as time goes on. They've already confirmed that Direct Storage's GPU compression is faster in Windows 11, which modern AAA games are starting to take advantage of. And just before we dive in, I do want to clarify that none of these methods will brick or break your Steam Deck, as long as you have a Steam Deck recovery image on on a USB flash drive or a micro SD card, then you can boot into that to get the Steam Deck back to factory settings with SteamOS, as Gabe intended. Alright, now we're going to look at option 1, dual booting SteamOS and Windows on your internal SSD. Let's go over the pros and cons. First pro, you'll be guaranteed the best performance. Of course, this is not the case if you're just using the 64GB eMMC model. And that leads us to the first con, which is the space consumption. Since you're going to be sharing SteamOS and Windows on one drive, you'll want to at least have the 256 or 512 model, or better yet, install a 1 or 2 terabyte. By SSD. And while it is technically possible for you to have SteamOS and Windows both on a 64 gig, you're going to have to battle with storage when updates occur on either OS, and all of your games will need to exist on a micro SD card. So this usually leads to another question. Can I share a micro SD full of games with Windows and SteamOS together? The answer is yes. It is possible to share a single micro SD card full of games between SteamOS and Windows, but it requires some additional technical work that we're not going to cover in this video. So just to summarize this, my personal opinion is use this method of dual booting if you have a 256 gig or greater drive. And if you don't, maybe you should consider replacing the drive with a larger one. Or maybe you're willing to erase SteamOS entirely and replace it with Windows. The choice is yours. Another pro is after you get set up, you're not going to need any additional hardware and and it's also going to be just as portable as it was before. And that leads us to our next pro. This is the most stable option. What I mean by this is that the other options that we'll go over can have more possibilities of blue screening or outright crashing. But that doesn't mean that, that this method is perfect. This brings up our next con, which is that dual booting with the internal SSD can sometimes run into dual boot problems after system updates. The last time there was a major update that caused boot issues was when SteamOS 3.3 was released. Thankfully, there was still a way to manually fix the problems experienced at that time, but nowadays there are automatic fixes put in place for the two main custom dual boot menus that are offered for the Steam Deck, which are Refined and Clover. I have separate instructional videos for both of these options, I will link in the description. I do highly recommend using one of them after you get Windows set up in the video. And this last con is that this method is the most complex process, but it's really not that difficult. 
difficult. If you follow this guide, you should have Windows up and running in about 20 to 30 minutes, and then you'll have some additional customization inside of Windows after that point. And this finally brings us to our last pro, which is that this process doesn't require another computer. Both the external SSD and the micro SD versions require Rufus, which is a Windows only application. So you would need a separate Windows computer to use either of those methods. Now that the pros and cons are out of the way, let's go over the hardware requirements for this setup. First you'll need your Steam Deck, and then you're going to need either one USB flash drive or one micro SD card that you're willing to erase the contents of. Lastly, a dock with a keyboard is good, but it's not required. If you're going to use a USB flash drive, you're also going to need a way to connect it to your Steam Deck if it's not USB-C. You'll need a dock of some sort, and I've linked a few in the description. Your USB or micro SD will also need to be at least 8 gigabyte in size or more. I really recommend at least 16 gig, and this will wipe the entire contents of it. We're going to use the following software to accomplish our goal. The Windows installation image. Gparted, which is a partition management tool we're going to use to shrink the Steam OS partitions on the disk, Ventoy, which is an application that can make bootable USBs or micro SDs, and Gparted and the Windows installation will go on this. So let's get on the Steam Deck and start by going into desktop mode from Steam OS, and then you'll need to set a password if you've not yet. So click the deck logo and then go to system and then console. Type in passwd and press enter, then go ahead and set your password. Next, you'll need to find the version of Windows you want. Today, I'm going to test with Windows 10 IoT LTSC Enterprise. Once you have Windows downloaded, open your web browser and go to ventoy.net. Under the Downloads section, just click on the Linux version and it will take you to the GitHub. Scroll down a little bit and you'll see that there's a Ventoy version that says Linux. Click on that. Once it's downloaded, open the Downloads folder and then right click on the file and choose Extract, and then Extract Archive here, Auto Detect Subfolders. Then you'll open the folder, scroll down, and right click on the Ventoy GUI underscore x86 underscore x64, and then go into the Permissions tab. We want to make sure that the box is checked is executable. So if it's not checked, check it, and then click OK. Make sure that your flash drive is inserted or your micro SD card at this time and then double click that same app file that we looked at the permissions of. You'll be prompted to enter your password that you just set up. Enter it and then make sure that your USB drive is selected. If you have a micro SD card instead, then it will be blank. You'll need to go to the left hand side of option and then click show all devices. Then make sure that the SD slash MMC is selected in the drop down and click install. Once this has finished installing, you can close the application and you should now see a mounted Ventoy in the Dolphin file browser. Next, we will go back into the web browser and download the remaining software. Go to gparted.org and then under download, click the download that has AMD64 in the title. Next, go ahead and search for Valve Windows Resources and you'll find this page. Download everything in the list here. Once these have all finished downloading, you can make a folder to put them in if you want. Then, select them all, right click and go to Extract, Extract Archive 2, and locate the Ventoy drive on the bottom left. You can make a new folder here called Steam Deck Drivers. Once it's open, click OK and it will begin the extraction process. Now you want to make sure that you have everything laid out here in the Ventoy drive. Your Steam Deck drivers, the Gparted, and the Windows image files. If so, you're ready to shut down your Steam Deck to boot into Gparted. Once shut down, hold Volume Minus and Power. 
Then select the USB or micro SD card that you have connected and press A. Please note that the entire Gparted process will have the screen vertical and this is because the Steam Deck display is actually a natively vertical display. So I'm flipping the video for you to view it easier. You'll be shown a menu of your boot options which should be Gparted and Windows. Press A for Gparted. Any prompts you are met with in Gparted, we will just continue to press A until it gets into the operating system. There's about three or four different times that it will prompt you and it may not ask for enter so just when it looks like it stops just keep pressing a once inside of the operating system for Gparted, you'll select your NVMe drive, and you might be thinking, Bald Sea Lion, you said that 64 gigabyte models are not recommended for this, and yes, you caught me. I do have a 64 gigabyte EMMC in here and that I'm testing with, but this is not my permanent drive, and I don't plan to keep this configuration. I'm just showing that it is possible, and I didn't want to mess up my main drive. Anyways, back onto the instructions. Here you should see eight partitions. At the very bottom is the home partition. Right click this and choose resize slash move. Then you're going to use your trackpad on the Steam Deck to go to the edge of the space on the right until it shows two arrows pointing in the opposite direction. Then you can hold the trigger and move with the trackpad to resize it. If you have a keyboard and a dock, you could plug in the keyboard and just set the value manually, which is much easier. Otherwise, you'll have to use the slider. In this case, I'm gonna give Windows about 18 gigabyte of space, which is not a lot, but we don't have a lot of wiggle room here. Click OK when you're finished, and then scroll down now where it says unallocated space. Right click again and then choose new partition or new. Here I'm just setting a buffer partition. This is to prevent SteamOS from resizing the hard drive if you accidentally boot into it before installing Windows. You can set this to be a small size like 400 meg and then set the partition type to NTFS and click OK. Now we need to apply all of these changes. Click the green check mark at the top to apply and wait a little while. Okay, on the EMMC drive, you can see it took almost 25 minutes. On the 256 or 512 Steam Decks, this will be much, much faster. It's usually just about four or five minutes. But now that it's done, we can close the Gparted window and then click on the exit icon at the top left. And usually I double or triple click this and wait about 15 seconds or so because there's just some sort of delay when you select it. And then when it comes up, you can just choose shut down and then say OK. After the Steam Deck powers off, hold volume minus and power again to get back into your USB or micro SD. In this case, this time I'm choosing my USB because I have both micro SD and USB connected, which both have Ventoy, but I just wanted to sample that it is compatible with both options. Once inside the menu again, use the D-pad down arrow to highlight the Windows install image and press A. it will boot into the Windows Setup menu. Go through the first prompts and choose I don't have a product key unless you have a product key. Then when prompted to choose whether it's an upgrade or custom installation, choose custom installation. Now you'll be presented with the partitions on the drive. Scroll down to the bottom and you should see the small NTFS partition we created at the bottom. Select this and delete it. Then on the remaining unallocated space, select it and then choose new. Then click apply and then okay and then next to start the installation. Let it complete the installation process and it will reboot. Once you get into Windows, you'll need to set it up as normal. You might need to use the on-screen keyboard so you can click the little tool icon on the bottom left and then enable that to set an account name and password if you want. If you wait to enable on-screen keyboard when you see the wireless display on Windows 11, then it's going to be grayed out and you won't be able to proceed and you'll have to just shut down and start over. Now that you're all done with this and you're in Windows, you can skip to the last timestamp of this video, which is going to go over the driver setup. Okay, now we're going to go into method number two, which was installing Windows on an external SSD. We're going to go over the first pro, which is that this method will not write anything to your internal drive or make any changes to your Steam Deck. So it's entirely evasive. You won't have to worry about opening your Steam Deck and upgrading your storage or any sort of boot problems with SteamOS. You can boot with it or without it. And this leads us to our first con, which is that if you have Windows running, you have to always have this connected to your Steam Deck 
even if it's in sleep mode. If you have it plugged into a dock and it loses power, like you disconnecting the charger or reconnecting it, it's likely going to freeze or crash. Of course, not all docks are created equal, but it's something to keep in mind and seems to be a common issue. With this option, you're going to also lose some portability unless you plan on mounting it to the back of the Steam Deck, which many people have done using attachments like the Deckmate. The next pro is that this is a faster option than the micro SD or the internal EMMC as long as you aren't still using the EMMC for the external drive. And of course the con is that it's not going to be as fast as running Windows on the 256 or 512 gig models. This is limited to the bandwidth on the deck, the dock, and the external enclosure. Some will do 10 gigabits per second, but most commonly are 5 gigabits per second. So make sure you review which one you buy, which cable you use, because 10 gigabits is supported on the Steam Deck itself. Another con here is that there's no clear upgrade path for Windows. For example, if you were on Windows 10 and you decided you wanted to upgrade to Windows 11, while it is possible, technically, it's not easy and you're going to need to know exactly how to upgrade or if you just click the button to do it, you're going to break your installation. Now, all that aside, let's move on to the requirements. The first thing is going to be your Steam Deck. Second is your external SSD and obviously a way to connect it to your Steam Deck. And then you're also going to need a secondary PC running Windows. Windows. I chose the cheapest 10 gigabit per second USB-C enclosure I could find and it's been working well for me. I've linked the one I bought in the description below. This should take either a 2280 or a 2230 size NVMe drive. Once you have it put together and connected to your Steam Deck, then download your version of Windows that you want to install. In my case, I'm downloading the stock Windows 11 from Microsoft. Next, in your web browser, search for and download the Rufus application. This is what we're going to use to install Windows to the NVMe drive. After it's done downloading, open Rufus and make sure your drive is connected and selected at the top. If it's blank, check disk management and see if the drive is detected or maybe it just needs formatted. Once it is formatted, you can close and reopen Rufus and you should see it. Then click the select button on the right to browse to your Windows image that you downloaded. Change the image option from standard Windows installation to Windows to go. You can change the volume label if you want and it's just the description that will show for the drive. Once you click start, you're gonna be given a prompt of which version of Windows you want. Either Windows Home or Windows Pro are the typical options. Pro just has remote desktop and BitLocker capabilities. That's about the two largest differences for the Steam Deck. Click OK when you're finished. On the next menu, you can uncheck Prevent Windows to Go from accessing internal disks if you want to be able to access your Steam Deck hard drive natively. But note that the partition format of the Steam Deck is not natively accessible without enabling Windows subsystems for Linux, and we won't get into that on this video. If you don't want to use a Microsoft account to log in, check the Remove Requirement for an online Microsoft account. You'll also then want to check the Create a Local Account with a Username and you can set a username right here. Finally, check the bottom option, disable data collection and click OK. Once the image is finished, it should say ready and show that the progress bar is completely full and green. Additionally, you should see the drive and file explorer now. What you can do is download all of the drivers from Valve's Windows Resources website, the links in the description, and then put this in a folder on that drive. Now you're ready to connect this to the Steam Deck. With the Steam Deck powered off, connect the external drive, then hold volume minus and power to get into the boot menu and choose the drive from the list. The first boot sequence will take several minutes, and if it boots back into SteamOS on its own, just shut down and then repeat the process of booting back into it. Once you get into the Windows out of box experience, just complete the setup as needed. You might need to use the on-screen keyboard so you can click the little tool icon on the bottom left and then enable that to set an account name and password if you want. Now that you're in Windows, you can skip to the last timestamp of this video which is going to go over the driver setup and some other options. Here we are. The moment many have been waiting for, the third 
final and least recommended option using an SD card. Now let me be fair, using a micro SD card for Windows is a good way to test out Windows and see if it's right for you, but by no means would I ever recommend it for a lengthy period of time. Some people say, oh you're just using scare tactics, or oh SD cards have 10,000 write life cycles which means it's good for 20 or 30 years. And the truth of the matter it is, they are just not as robust or redundant for these purposes as an NVMe drive. We can argue all day about the technical data on paper, but the reality is I've helped a lot of people in the last year with Windows on the Steam Deck and most that tried it on an SD card came back to me two or three months later and said they decided to dual boot on the NVMe because their SD card died. Now a couple people that have fought with me tooth and nail about this will say that they've been using their SD card for six months with no issues and to them I say congratulations you beat the status quo. So let's so let's get into our pros and cons. First pro would be that this is an easy way to test. First con is it's going to kill your card a lot quicker than most normal circumstances. The next pro would be similar to method two that with the external drive that there is no changes to the Steam Deck system itself with this option. Another con would be the performance. It's just really, really not good. Micro SD cards are not designed for random reads and writes. You can see a comparison side by side here of a third party Samsung 2230 NVMe, the 64 gigabyte eMMC from Valve, and then a micro SD card which is the SanDisk Extreme. Basically, your bottleneck will always be your micro SD card. You're going to see stuttering in games unless you're playing some really old or indie 2D titles. And additionally, Windows itself will just be much, much slower. Finally, the last con is going to be stability. Windows is notoriously bad with managing micro SD cards. You'll experience blue screens, you'll experience crashing of games, and eventually you'll experience operating system corruption. It's just all around a bad idea, but for educational purposes, and to ease the curiosity of those that don't want to make any modifications to their Steam Deck infrastructure, we will continue on with this process. You're firstly going to want a very good microSD card. However, keep in mind the microSD reader in the Steam Deck can only go up to 100 megabits a second, so even if you buy a card that claims to have 150 megabits per second, you won't be achieving that. Also, since this is going to be used for both the operating system and applications, that 100 megabit per second capacity will be shared between the read and write, so it's something to keep in mind. I'd personally recommend the SanDisk Extreme microSD card. It seems to run Windows okay. I have a Samsung Evo Plus from Amazon and it has been absolutely terrible for Windows. It appears to be fine for a few days and then it just dies, so I don't understand what is wrong with it. I've tried formatting it multiple times. This is my personal experience with it. I can count on my hand about four or five people that have also had bad experiences with this card in Windows on the Steam deck so I just don't recommend it. If you watch method number two this is almost identical. You're going to need your Steam Deck. You're going to need a good micro SD card and then you're going to need a separate PC that is running Windows. On your Windows PC go and download your favorite version of Windows. In my case I'll be using the Windows 11 stock image from Microsoft. Next, in your web browser, search for and download the Rufus application. This is what we'll use to install the Windows 11 image onto the micro SD card. After it's done downloading, open Rufus and make sure your drive is connected and selected at the top. Then click the start button and browse to your Windows image you downloaded. Change the image option from standard Windows installation to Windows to go. You can change the volume label if you want, it's just the description that will show for the drive. Once you click start, you'll be given a prompt of which version of Windows you want, either Windows Home or Windows Windows Pro are the typical options. Pro just has remote desktop and BitLocker capabilities. That's about the only two large differences for the Steam Deck. Click OK when you're finished. On the next menu, you can uncheck Prevent Windows to go from accessing internal disks if you want to be able to access your Steam Deck hard drive natively, but note that the partition format for the Steam Deck or Steam OS is not natively accessible without enabling Windows Subsystem for Linux, which we won't get into in this video. If you don't want to use a Microsoft account to log in, then check remove requirement for an online Microsoft account and then you're going to want to also check the box to create a local account with username and then set an account name. Finally go ahead and check the bottom option to disable data collection and click OK. Once the image is finished, it should say ready and show that the progress bar is completely full and green. Additionally, you should see the drive and file explorer now. What you can do is download all of the drivers from Valve's Windows Resources website, the links in the description, and then put this in a folder on that drive.
Now you're ready to connect this to the Steam Deck. With the Steam Deck powered off, connect the micro SD card, then hold volume, minus, and power to get to the boot menu, and then choose the micro SD card from the list. The first boot sequence is going to take several minutes, and if it boots back into SteamOS on its own, just shut it down and then complete the process of booting back into the micro SD card into the Windows out of box experience, just complete the setup as needed. You might need to use the on-screen keyboard so you can click the little tool icon on the bottom left and then enable that to set an account name and password if you want. And now you're ready to continue on with the driver setup. I know that the screen is hard to look at right now. It's sideways because the display panel for the Steam Deck is actually a vertical display. We do want to change this, but only after we do one thing, otherwise we're going to have to do it twice and I hate doubling work. Whatever method you use to dual boot, go into File Explorer and open your drive and you should have a Steam Deck drivers folder. If the files are zipped still, you'll need to extract them into the subfolders. Once that's done, start with the folder labeled GFX and run the setup.exe. At the setup screen, click the additional settings on the left and then set it to factory reset. Please note that you're going to always want to check this box when upgrading the drivers or downgrading them. Eventually, it's going to prompt that it wants to restart and you might have to drag the window around to the left to see that red restart button. But instead of using it when it asks to restart, just click the window start menu and shut down from there. Then once your Steam Deck is shut down, hold volume minus and power again and select the drive that you have Windows installed on. Once it boots back up and you log in, it will automatically continue the process of installing. Finally, it will want one more restart and we'll do that same method of shutting down from the Windows start menu and then booting into your Windows drive. Now, once you're back into Windows, you're going to want to change the orientation so you can see better. Right click the background of Windows using the left trigger and then choose display settings. Scroll down to the orientation and change it from portrait to landscape. Much better. While you're in here, change the display scaling size from 125% to 100%. It's going to make some things harder to read, but it's going to fix some issues with certain games, as well as being able to see the application windows fully, because some are cut off at 125%. Next, go back into the drivers folder, and you're going to want to get the sound working. Open the folder that starts with NAU. Right click on the file with the type setup information and choose install. Then, go back into the drivers folder, click on the folder that says CS35, find the setup information file, right click and choose install. After this is done, you should have audio and you should be able to click the volume slider to hear sound. Next we can do the Bluetooth drivers which start with RT Blue. Open the folder, right click on the install driver file and click on run as administrator. and then go back into the drivers folder, open the RTW LAN folder, run the setup, and that's for the wireless drivers. The other folder, base or SD, is for the micro SD reader, and honestly, I never found that I had to install it. The built-in Windows driver has worked fine for me. So that's it for the Valve official drivers, but there are still a couple of community-based drivers. One is from a group called Amerneme, or Amerneme, I don't know how you pronounce it, that has a custom GPU driver or APU driver. I have a video on how to install it, which is in the description. It's a much more complex process, and I would only recommend it if you have a specific game you're having compatibility issues with, but there are even some compatibility issues with certain games with the Amerneme drivers as well. And lastly, but most importantly, there are community wireless drivers. Honestly, the stock drivers are very poor. In community testing, we have found it has lag spikes and packet loss. You may find it works good enough for you. If you don't play online games, you might be right. But otherwise, I would recommend to follow this portion of the video to install the killer wireless drivers. The driver credit goes to a community member by the name of the Boss 619 and another community member, Ryan Rudolph, has tested it extensively and put together a nice script in a package. I've linked to GitHub in the description, but we're going to run through it right now. First, you want to make sure that your language for the operating system is set to English or the script won't work. You can temporarily switch it to run the script and then switch
switch the language back after. Now, just go to the GitHub page. You can search for Ryan Rudolph Steam Wi-Fi Fix. And once you're on the GitHub page, click on the code button and then download zip. Once this is finished downloading, open and extract the contents. Right click the setup.bat and run it as administrator. This will install the driver and make all the appropriate changes. If it looks like it's hanging after it says it's installing Ryan's settings, just press enter and then it should say that it's complete. If you have issues seeing your wireless network, that's because the script also modifies the settings that work best for the Steam Deck, which is that it also disables any 2.4 gigahertz networks. You can re-enable this by going into device manager then network adapters and double click on the killer wireless adapter. Click on the advanced tab, then scroll down to wireless mode and you can change it to auto. Okay, that was a lot to run through, but it gets you a head start into the setup. So where do you go from here? I would say the next step is to set up a custom dual boot loader. Both Clover and Refine work great for custom dual boot menus, and what's nice about them is you don't have to press volume minus and power anymore, and you can restart the Steam Deck and it just works. I personally use Clover, but here are both videos on the screen, so be sure to check them out. After you get that set up, look at which controller software to use. Your choices pretty much are Steam Deck tools, handheld companion, and glossy. In the future, I'm going to be making a video that compares all three of those softwares and shows my recommended setup. But be sure to join my Discord in the description to get some really great community support and suggestions. That's it for this video. I'll see you next time.